Up next on the menu, the low angle row, or what I'll call the scapular row, since I'm not gonna be really focused on the elbow drive, don't really need it. I need to extend and contract. It's all about the scapula, it's all about the traps, and that's what I wanna grow. That's what this targets, so let's go. Oh, that's hard to do after a set. All right, heavy duty crew, it is Wednesday, 9.20 p.m., October the 3rd. I just looked, but I forgot. Anyhow, we're in here again to train back. It's late. We've had quite the eventful last three weeks. First, it started with the stomach stuff. Then my neck gets all jacked up doing this job I was doing. Then we trained legs, that awesome leg session. And uh, two days of being in a machine seated for like 11 hours, my entire legs just locked up. I mean, I was in excruciating pain, getting maybe two or three hours of sleep a night for a few days. <laughs> Finally got all that shit sorted through some uh, two episodes of tissue work and a whole bunch of stretching. Uh, turns out my hamstrings had adhered to my IT bands. My, my quads were locked up, having everything else in a bind. So that's all freed up, feeling 100% and uh, ready to get after it. So we're here to train back. Uh, we're going to repeat the movements we did last time because it's bread and butter, baby. Works excellent. So I'm all warmed up. I'm going to hit a couple warm up sets on this and uh, we'll catch you on the top set. All right. So I warmed up the lats. I uh, did a slow set of pullovers and a couple set of pull downs. Call them sets. I did like two or three reps ascending up and wait until I reach where I'm going to work, which is going to be 230 pounds. We're going to go to beat reps from last week. So I'm looking for eight reps plus. I'm going to say a little prayer. I kind of irritated my forearm at work climbing out of a 17 yard Reynolds pan. Apparently 215 pounds pushed on one arm. It didn't like that. That's a note. When you're big and muscular, man, you can't just go from zero to, zero to 100 miles an hour. Your body's not ready to experience the strength that you have available at any given second. So I need to be more mindful of that. It started off with uh, them handing me a sledgehammer to break the uh, old clay that was all dried up on this piece of equipment. And I just went full bore, then climbing out, kind of irritated it. Hopefully it doesn't bother me pulling this down. So I'm gonna gather myself. Here we go. That was the strangest thing ever. I had this burning, stabbing pain in my calf. Mashed the rep range, so next week we can go up and wait. That was nasty. A little explosive from the top. That's okay. It was out of a full stretch. And you notice when we got to the bottom, we contracted, we held it, we released the negative. We felt it all the way through. Went back to fully stretched, contracted again. Kept the elbows tucked. We're training the lats. So we'll move from there to the next one. So yeah, things have been shitty, man. Just one thing after another, you know, makes eating harder, you know, when you're in constant pain, not getting sleep. And just the, the randomness of these things happening one after the other, you know, and mostly associated with work. I did the stupid thing and drank the spoiled milk, which turned into a two week epidemic or that wasn't the right word, not an epidemic, <laughs> whatever episode. So I guess what I'm kind of getting at is shit happens, but it's what you do after it happens. Just come in. I come in when I can. I train when I can. I eat to the best of my ability with the way my time is restrained and the circumstances make it hard, but we're still making progress. That last set I just did, it's fucking awesome. You know, the amount of power I had from the pulls, uh, the ability to contract and just squeeze and hold it, let it out. I could see myself looking fuller and bigger today. It's still pretty tight. These are all wins despite the circumstances. And what makes it so successful is it's this training philosophy. If I would have tried to train every day or multiple days in a row with this kind of intensity and the things going on in life you know that's how you end up with an injury that's how you end up burnout that's how you set yourself back weeks and months in your progress and, and thankfully you know with the way we do things is the rest is what's paramount and even though all that stuff's going on i still have enough time my body has enough time to progress so happy with that so we worked the lats now we're coming and we're going to work the center and middle back the big difference here in how we're pulling we're still going to get that full stretch we're still going to come back and get that contraction but the difference is going to be our elbow positioning right so as we were training the lats we had our elbows tucked that's where you're feeling the lats when you pick your elbows up you can feel it start pulling into your middle back Ooh. Oh, listening to uh, Golden Mouth of Ruin by Archspire. It's good. I'm gonna rip my neck and then I'm gonna thug it out. So 2.30, again, going for over eight reps. Hopefully I can hit it. I'm really impressed with the way my arms look now, huh? Isn't that awesome? Look like I got big arms. 
Jesus will take my body. Rest pause. Yeah, the pulse had completely degraded into just momentum. Um, I couldn't feel a contraction or a hold anymore. It was like my body was just so exhausted from it that I was like trying to pull with my arms and just manipulate it by swinging my body weight. So that's great though. Crush those reps. Progress, progress. Big win. <sighs> All right, we'll move on to our scapular rows and train these traps. Up next on the menu, the low angle row, or what I'll call the scapular row, since I'm not going to be really focused on the elbow drive. Don't really need it. I need to extend and contract. It's all about the scapula, it's all about the traps, and that's what I wanna grow, and that's what this targets. So moving up uh, 10 pounds on each side, let's go. I'm expecting eight to 10 reps. If I do get that, then I know I need to go up 20 pounds next week, so I'm gonna feel it out. Oh, that's hard to do after a set. Oh, I can't wait till my back isn't fat anymore. One thing I noticed is that I, I hold a bit of fat all over my back. I don't like that. I wish it was as tight as my abs or my quads or my glutes from the side, which was something I never had lean. All right, what's next on the back day? We did a standing pullover. I don't quite remember. I'll roll back the footage and you'll see me on the next one. Well, it was also obvious when I looked back at the footage and uh, turns out it was back extensions because I'm wanting to uh, keep up my lower back and erectors. So here we are. We're gonna up the weight a lot because last time I did, uh, I think it was 140 or 130 for way too many reps. So I'm gonna do 160. If it feels light on the first rep, I'll go ahead and move it up. But these things are pretty cool. Feel real good. It gives the lats a bit extra work as well, but I really like it for those erectors. And you know, frankly, doing this is a position we need to put our bodies in. We're always so worried about crunching forward, bracing ourselves forward when we press, when we do so many different things. That back extension is really important. Uh, when guys who prioritize their training around absolutely destroying themselves, like Louis Simmons, when their favorite things is reverse hypers, that's something you could take note of. If it even somewhat protects these psychopaths from destroying their bodies, then it's definitely something we should consider in our programming for injury prevention. And frankly, I want a better Christmas tree, which my Christmas tree is fantastic, but I want to improve all the parts of my body, right? So leave no stone unturned. Enough of my yapping. Yeah, yeah. 
Failure on that is that's a whole different feeling. That's not a part of the course. That's not a normal thing that we hit failure on. I don't really like this machine. I wish there was something to hold in front, but what I found is just driving as much through my feet as possible to keep my hips tucked in the back of this machine. It seemed to do the job. We'll be able to progress on this thing for a bit. That was heavy, but I can definitely go up next time and that'll get me more into range. But my lower back is torched. The entirety of my back is torched. I mean, we hit all the points, right? We broke our training up into three segments, pulling from above, pulling from in front, pulling from below, and we did a hinging movement to work our lower back without all of the load taxing our CNS and uh, just generating a shitload of fatigue, which is something I'm all about, you know? Getting a bunch of growth stimulation and not feeling like shit all week. I, I do that easily enough. I don't need training to help me. So uh, I'm gonna go and hit a set of hamstrings and a set of calves as part of the course for this new split. You know, with the frequency of training, being almost over two weeks before I hit a body part again, I'm slipping these sets in to other workouts. Hamstrings are always a priority for me. I want them to be devastating on stage when I turn around from behind. So they have a really nice standing hamstring curl that I like a lot. So I'm gonna hit that. Gonna hit a set of calves. Actually, I might not, because my calves got tweaked earlier and uh, they were one of the things hurting me really bad. So I'll leave calves out. I'll go hit hamstrings. Not sure I'll record it, but I gotta do some posing for Phil. This will be my check-ins for him. Hopefully he's not disappointed in me or he'll punish me. I need to be punished. You need to be punished. All right, go hit hamstrings. <laughs> 